Hi, my name is Bradley Secker. I'm a British photojournalist living in Istanbul in Turkey. Uh, and with the help of the Pulitzer Center, I was able to continue my reporting on LGBT plus migration and uh, asylum issues, uh, which I'd previously focused on the last 10 years in and around the Middle East um, and Turkey. And with the Pulitzer grant, I was able to further this work and um, be the first person to photograph the story across Europe about LGBT plus migration and those that are seeking asylum based on sexuality or gender identity grounds. Um, the project was called Gay Europa, which is uh, a word often used in Russian-speaking countries to refer to Europe in a derogatory sense to kind of signify both their lack of acceptance of LGBT plus rights um, and to kind of ridicule, in a sense, Europe for, for being more accepting and more diverse um, with sexual minorities. So with the help of the Pulitzer Center, I was able to spend several months uh, across many different countries in Western Europe, following many different people uh, with a range of different identities from all over the world, uh, from as diverse as Ethiopia to Morocco to Tajikistan, Ukraine, Russia uh, and Turkey, amongst others. Um, each of these people had their own personal story, of course, and um, were claiming asylum or had just received asylum based on grounds of their sexuality and or uh, gender identity. And the situations in their home countries were vastly different. Some people were technically classed as illegal for being who they are and all, you know, who they love. So for example, there is Wael, who is a transgender man, uh, an intersex man from uh, Morocco, who is living in Bergen, a city in western Norway. He claimed asylum in Norway based on his gender identity and the fact that in Morocco he would not be allowed to change his legal or physical gender. Um, he doesn't really plan to stay in Europe for that long. He plans to complete the transition and uh, gender reassignment surgery and return uh, home to Morocco, his country, which he loves very much. So I'm fortunate enough to have the project published in three different outlets uh, with very diverse different uh, audiences, which were The Guardian, BuzzFeed News and Politico Europe. One of the stories uh, in Politico Europe had a more political sense, obviously, to try and raise the question of why the European Union doesn't have a uh, unified approach to LGBT asylum and why it's left to each country to make their own rules, and these rules really vary greatly in, uh, in how people have to navigate them. Uh, the piece in BuzzFeed News was more a kind of expose of several different people's profiles and the issue itself. Whereas the Guardian uh, piece, which ran, was more looking at the psychological um, and mental health issues surrounding being a minority within a minority um, and running alongside, running from those you had to run alongside. I mean, people often get to Europe and they think, okay, now I'm, I'm in a more liberal, tolerant environment, I'm protected by law, but in fact, um, Many people were put in asylum centres where they were with many people from their own countries and basically the whole diaspora uh, and the whole issues that they faced, all the issues and the problems they faced in their own countries were sort of lifted up and then dropped and planted in this asylum centre, let's say, in, in Sweden or in, in Austria. And then there was also the issues I covered which try and discuss uh, racism from the LGBT communities in the host countries and xenophobia, which a lot of people have experienced because they're either not white or not Western European or maybe not from a Christian background. Um, and of course the, the homophobia and the transphobia from both the local population as well as the other migrant refugee populations in those countries.